make sure that we are live. Okay. Says meeting is now streaming on Facebook. I see it. Perfect. Hello, everybody. We are um, live today at, of course, Live at Five with Top Weddings. And today we have Austin Barton with us. Um, we will wait just a few minutes to see if we get some people to um, get, as, as people keep on joining us. Um, so just want to welcome everyone first. Um, thank you, um, anyone who's watching this. Thank you for, for tuning in. We're incredibly thankful to be able to do this every week. We have amazing wedding professionals that um, join us every week to help. Our ultimate goal with the with the Live at Fives is really to help uh, wedding or sorry couples that are planning a wedding, and um, and we have a huge team of wedding professionals over fifty that are on top weddings that um, have a heart of just really helping couples. And, um, and so we're grateful for Austin today and we'll introduce him in, in just a few minutes. Um, if you have not met Austin, um, you're gonna learn a lot about him tonight and um, learn, yeah, the amazing things that he does behind the scenes. Um, so we are streaming, of course, live on Facebook and then also on, in our 417 Engage Couples group. So if you are engaged and you're needing help with planning, or you know, need support or anything like that, you can absolutely join our 417 Engage Couples Group. We'd love for you to do that. Um, we have about, um, I think it's 90 couples um, that are in there now and, and um, would love, love to have you join us. Um, we do this again every Wednesday and um, our, um, what we do after this meeting today, so, um, after this live, we will take this video and we cut it so that um, if you're wanting to watch shorter segments of it, but Austin, um, we have quite a, a variety <laughs> of uh, things that we're going to be talking about tonight. So we're, we're incredibly excited to have him here and hopefully um, we'll wait just a few more seconds. And if you have questions for Austin, um, you know, make sure that you put those in the comments. We would love to answer any questions at the end of the live. We will um, answer any questions that are that come in. So make sure that you do that as well. And um, feel free to share it. We would love to give Austin some love because of, of well, we just love him anyway. But um, absolutely, um, you can give him some love um, in the comments as well and uh, feel free to share it again. So. Okay, um, so today we have, again, I feel like I've said your name 10 times, Austin. <laughs> so today we have Austin Barton uh, with Ace Legendary. And um, so Austin, tell us about, about yourself. Well, where to begin? Um, I started filming weddings in 2011 and went full time at the end of 2012. Uh, at the time I was working at Best Buy, I was working in the gaming department and then I transitioned to the digital imaging department. And that's kind of how I learned camera stuff was, I like remember Tate, like I, I got transitioned to work in that department because, you know, gaming, it was a great department, but it wasn't exactly like the most bustling department in Best Buy. So occasionally if other zones got busy, they would shift us over there. So I'd have to go over there and just make stuff up on the fly talking to people about cameras and I was like well this isn't going to work I sound like I don't know what I'm talking about because I don't so I remember just like in between customers like looking up YouTube tutorials I mean Best Buy had like some online learning that you could take to kind of learn a little bit about cameras but it was it wasn't that, it wasn't that great so just basically over the course of a few years I went from knowing absolutely nothing to cameras to being able to shoot manual without even owning a camera just being able to play around with the display models <laughs> so <clears throat> that was kind of how I got started in the on the technological side but I was going to OTC at the time I was taking their electronic media production program which at the time was all encompassing and it included like game design plus video production 
and uh, yeah, I had a buddy that worked at Best Buy and he invited me to shoot his cousin's wedding. It was just for free, you know, test out this new camera that you just got. I just got a Canon 7D was my first camera. Had a thrifty 50, the old 50 millimeter 1.8. You know, it's like $100, feels like a Lego. Okay. Uh, but yeah, and I just fell in love with the the blank canvas that is, you know, weddings. It's not like a corporate shoot or a commercial shoot where you're like, you have 60 seconds, you have to get this many shots, you have to use this exact song, and I need to get this dialogue in there, It's which is pretty limiting. Weddings are like you show up and you have this story to tell, and every filmmaker that shows up to a wedding can really put their own spin on it. Like, I would, I think a really cool, like, reality TV show, I mean, I don't think wedding videographers are popular enough to pull this off, but if you had a bunch of like like 10 wedding filmmakers shoot the same wedding day and like to see how they all put the film together and how they all handle shots would be really fascinating because there's so many different ways to pull a film together in post that right. I think, in, which is we're gonna get a little into that later today, uh, that I think it's a really fascinating process for sure. But yeah, I love it. Yeah. And if you have not seen Austin's work as far as, you know, his, his films, um, you know, we will, again, like Austin said, we have two, really two topics. We kind of combined um, the, sec the second and third topic into one. Um, so we will actually be showing you a film here in just a little while. And, you know, um, yeah, they, they bring tears to your eyes. I mean, I, I feel like you tell the story so well um, and and just love it. So, and tell us, um, I know you're you're married. So tell us just a little bit about that. <laughs> yeah, just got married. Uh, and it, we just got married in September of last year. And I'm glad that we chose to do it then because we were thinking about putting it off until this year. And I'm really glad we didn't because uh, <laughs> we, we eloped to in, in Iceland, actually, my wife and I did. And it was just us two. And there was no family or friends or bridal party or catering or anything like that. I mean, it was just, you know, I proposed in Iceland a year prior and we knew that we're like, we got it. Well, it came down to Australia or Iceland. It was one of those two. And then it was just kind of dictating what the next like cheap flights that came through was. And then we got these crazy round trip deals to Iceland for like 300 bucks. We're like, that's a pretty good sign right there. So yeah, we went there and we spent uh, two days in Iceland with uh, a filmmaker and photographer duo named The Quirky. And they're a French couple. Mm -hmm. They do some really, really cool work. And it, it's kind of different than my own. Like my stuff is very like clean and well composed and like steady shots. And I like to like to let the action unfold within the frame. Uh, the Quirky is very much like handheld and like gritty and like earthy tones, which is very appropriate for Iceland, which is why we kind of gravitated towards their style. Uh, but it was really cool and it was very weird being on the other side of the camera because it's like oh man I know exactly what kind of shot you're getting right now and we picked our Airbnb specifically because it would look awesome for our morning preps so like we had this big like blank gray slate wall with all this natural light we're like we're gonna do preps here we're gonna do some you know bedroom stuff here with like this skylight looking down on us but it was uh yeah it was awesome and um it was cool because now I can I can officially be like one of those people that can explain this is why you should get a wedding film because the photos are freaking awesome and every now and then I'll whip up my phone and just kind of look at them and I can see that crazy awesome moment in time but if I want to actually relive what it felt like what it sounded like than the wedding films there like being able to hear us walk across like the blackstone beaches and stuff like that and like the wind and the waves crashing like that stuff that just video provides that photo doesn't and uh they're both so super important but i think it's i don't know yeah that was my favorite part was being able to hire a videographer it was an awesome experience after you know eight years in the business yeah yeah and definitely you could not film it yourself that is for sure yeah um, i didn't even think about it like people ask me they're like who's gonna film it are you just gonna film it yourself and i was like no 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 way that's too much work like i want to actually enjoy it because whenever i proposed to her i brought my camera with me because I was going to set up that shot for myself, you know, a tripod film in 4k and then export the screenshot of that moment. Right. So just carrying around a camera and like getting B-roll there is like, man, this feels like work. I mean, it's all really pretty, but it's still work. Uh, so yeah, whenever we went back, I was like, I'm not, I'm not bringing anything. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good because as good as you are, um, it definitely wouldn't be the same if you were worried about where your cameras were and, and all that good stuff. Right. So, um, but yes, um, 
love, um, yeah, love, love your, your story. I think it's so sweet. And um, yeah, so, okay, well, we um, have two topics. So our first topic that we are going to um, do is um, eight key things about hiring a um, wedding videographer. Um, and then we are going to, like Austin said, we are going to um, show you a film that Austin created and, um, and then he's going to do a breakdown. So if you've, like for me, I've been so excited. I've been getting it all day because this, I just, I'm so excited to hear what he puts into it. Just listening to him last night was like, oh my goodness, who knew? Um, so I think you will learn a lot about what a videographer really puts into, um, you know, the films that they create. So we are again, incredibly excited and we are going to go ahead and get started with the first, um, which I'm going to get my sh screen shared real quick. Okay. Um, so we are going to uh, talk about eight tips on what you need to know when um, when hiring a wedding videographer. So first tip, go ahead, Austin. Okay, so <clears throat> audio is really big for me. Um, so I was, I, one of the first questions I asked my videographer was, you know, what do you do to capture audio? Because your cameras have the ability to record audio, but it's really not good enough, especially for you know, vows and things like that, you really want to mic as close to the source of audio as possible. So finding out like um, if they use digital recorders with lav mics, uh, if they use a wireless setup, like I know a lot of like wireless sounds fancy, but I think wireless is actually kind of a nightmare now. Like there's just no real reason to do it. I mean, for one, you could have a wireless setup hooked up so you can be monitoring the vows as you're hearing them, but if it stops working or if you get interference, it's not like you can stop the ceremony and be like, hold up, we're getting some interference. Just give me one sec, let me clear this up. So right. what we do most, I mean, probably 98% of wedding filmmakers I know uh, all over the world, uh, including my own and myself, uh, use digital recorders that kind of sit in the inside pocket of the, the groom's jacket, uh, wrap it up with a little lab and it hooks right here. And then basically you sync up that audio in post. So it's not actually sending a signal to any sound systems. It's not hooked up to the camera. Um, and you do the same thing for the officiant. Um, I always ask if there's if there's anybody that's going to come up and do any like, um, say like Bible verse readings or poem readings or something like that, or if anybody other than the officiant and the couple is going to be talking, I need to know about it because my cameras are not going to be able to pick up that audio. Uh, so then I'll mic up anybody who's talking and I'll also plug into any available sound system and that's the ceremony or the reception. Sometimes if I'm really like, if I really wanna be redundant on, in audio, I will take a lav and dangle the mic above the tweeter on a speaker. And that's just a, a way to kind of get a little bit more room ambience and also a backup just in case my system goes down. Um, audio is, is just such a, I think it's what separates like beginning videographers with the more experienced because whenever I first got started, whenever a lot of filmmakers first get started, they tend to just make music videos. They just pick a popular song. They probably don't even license it properly. Um, and they make like a three and a half minute video, just lyrics telling you how you should feel on your wedding day. Um, and once you take that first jump into capturing the, the actual wedding day audio and incorporating it into their film to make it more you know, unique to each couple, I think that's when you really start to elevate your craft. So definitely ask, you know, how your your filmmaker, your videographer captures audio and how they incorporate it into their films. If you watch enough of their videos, you'll be able to tell if it's just music video style or if there's more of a documentary style or if it's kind of a mix of both. So yeah, definitely a good call. And for me, you know, just like you said earlier about your wedding, it's the words that, um, it's the words that, that honestly go into films. You know, it's, it's the, the, it's the story that you get to create and, um, and you don't get to do that, you know, and just like you said, I, obviously um, photography is huge, but just the audio is so important. And, you know, um, for those of you that are watching the, what Austin has in his hand in the slide um, is the, some of the equipment that he uses as far as audio. Yep. Yep. It's an important piece of tech. I've <laughs> audio. I mean, I've probably lost 
uh, a decade off my life expectancy just due to audio related stresses, but it's so worth it, I think, because it makes a huge difference in the end as far as getting a film that really represents the couple and, and not just some popular song. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. so number two. Yeah, so how many years of experience? Yeah, so this seems kind of like a duh question and it, it sounds like you're like interviewing your, your videographer, like, well, how many years have you uh, had experience dealing with issues? But the thing is, is that the more weddings that you film, especially if you're full time, um, you're gonna run into some scenarios where you gotta think really quickly on your feet. I mean, I've had plenty of scenarios where just some some little thing goes wrong, whether it's my fault or some outside circumstance, and you have to adapt because with weddings, you really, you can't redo anything. I mean, you can redo some things part of the day, like morning preps and makeup shots and maybe a little bit of the first look, but other than that, like, it's just, you gotta, you gotta roll with it. Um, for example, we had a, a wedding a few years ago where the, it was a foreign couple and they just, you know, a bunch of family members were, you know, telling me in advance, like, Hey, you know, just so you know, our timeline is very loose. Like, you know, we're supposed to start the ceremony at three 30, but it might start a little early. It might start a little late. So I was like, okay, no big deal. Uh, but then I remember setting up for the ceremony and I was looking at my second shooter. Oh, by the way, this is, she was sitting in my lap the whole time. So <laughs> she might pop up every now and then, but introduce her. Okay. So this is, this is Khaleesi. She's a Frenchie. As you can probably tell, and she just won't leave my lap. She might hop down here in a little bit, but if you hear anybody snoring, it's not it's not somebody sleeping on my floor. It's it's her. So, uh, but yeah, and I remember just looking at my second shooter, and he had this horrified look in his face. He was holding the tripod, and he was just staring. And I was like, "What?" And I turned around, and the bride was just already walking down the aisle, and we had one camera set up. And so I like threw him a camera and I was like, run down to the end of the aisle and capture coming down and I'll just handhold this from the back. And then once you're in place, then I will move. And, you know, those kind of scenarios, like you can't plan for them, but the more experience you have, the more uh, capable you're going to be at, at, you know, bouncing back from them. Uh, so definitely ask how many years of experience they have and maybe even ask if they have any fun stories like of, of, I mean, it sounds like super cliche like well tell me a time that you've had to you know think on your feet because we've all had those interview questions but you might be able to get some really fun stories and also you'll get an idea of like you might get some insight into how they work and how they film on a wedding day so good question for sure absolutely yeah okay equipment they use and if they have backup gear yeah, and so this one, like I see some blogs like The Knot and Wedding Wire will say like, hey, ask them like what kind of cameras they use. Um, it's not so much like brand specific. Like I, I don't think many couples truly care if they use Sony or Canon or Nikon. Like the filmmaker that we hired for our wedding was Sony. Uh, I'm entirely Canon, as you can see in the pictures. It Honestly, it really comes down to the person holding the camera, not so much the equipment in their hands. Um, but backup gear is really where it comes in. I mean, for a typical ceremony, we'll use a five or six camera setup. Uh, you know, one wide angle safety shot, another wide angle low, one angle for the groom, one angle for the bride, one tight down the middle. And if there's a balcony, like a top down shot or something else like that. Uh, and that's just, it's good to be able to bounce between those in the edit to make it a more uh, engaging experience. But uh, if one of those cameras breaks or overheats or uh, like gets fried or something, it's good to be able to quickly shift to another angle. Also, if um, if they're not doing like an unplugged ceremony and Uncle Bob walks out and sticks his iPad in front of the camera, it's good to be able to cut to another shot. So it's typically risky if they say, yeah, we'll bring two cameras to your wedding day and they're, and they're filming. Photographers can get away with two cameras, generally speaking, because they just have them both. They have those cool like Western holster things that I'm super jealous of and I wish I could rock, but I have no realistic reason to own. <laughs> But usually that's fine. With video though, because you're continuously rolling, uh, you want to have multiple angles, especially during parts of the day that you can't reshoot. So like the ceremony, the toast, and the formal dances usually are, are multi-camera setups, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you want to see the full thing in its entirety. Like if I deliver a full ceremony edit, if your ceremony is 26 minutes, you're, you know, your video is going to be 26 minutes from processional to recessional exactly as it occurred from multiple camera angles. It's going to look and sound better than it was for even the people that were in attendance. So um, asking what kind of equipment they have, uh, just I mean, if you're genuinely curious about it, like, you know, what's your favorite stuff to shoot on? Like, 
you can do a little research into camera brands, but it really doesn't matter. But mainly if they have some backup gear, I think is a, is a pretty a good thing to have for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, just like you said, the equipment just goes back to how long they've been shooting with it too. You know what I mean? Like, sure. Yeah. Like if I, if I just switched to Sony and I was going to shoot a wedding on it, that would be terrifying because I wouldn't, I wouldn't have muscle memory for all the buttons. It, like brides coming down the aisle and your exposure is too high. Like, you know, that's right. not something you really want to be messing around with. So if, if I say, like, if somebody asks me this, I'll be like, yeah, I shoot on Canon gear. I've got, you know, five or six cameras. I've been shooting on this camera system for, you know, almost a decade now. So I know the ins and outs of this stuff. I think that's pretty important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, what kind of film will you receive? Entire ceremony, highlights of the day, et cetera. Yeah, so every videographer is different for this um and even the terminology is different like my highlight film is different than somebody else's highlight film some people make a highlight film and it's like 12 minutes long that is not a highlight to me that is as a process right there that's more that's even above my feature film like my feature film is pushing like nine or ten minutes mm -hmm. um i i mean as a as a wedding filmmaker i am more of the uh quality over quantity so i don't really want to be pushing like 30 45 minute wedding videos i think those are just i mean they're kind of a drag i think some things are, are good in their entirety like the formal dances um but in terms of like creative edits i think the sweet spot is like four to six minutes really uh it's just a really good way to relive the entire day from the morning preparations until the end of the night wrapped up in a really sweet engaging experience and it doesn't overstay its welcome i mean granted if it's your film you're going to appreciate a longer edit so that's why you know i and many others do offer longer ones but it's good to to kind of get some clarification and if you look up somebody's wedding film on youtube and it says you know josh and and Jessica highlight and it's 12 minutes, that's not going to be the same as my highlight. So it's important to know the distinctions and talk to your videographer about that because there are some pretty big nuances and differences between what people are offering. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, so many people want what they can share on Facebook or, you know, um, or post on Instagram or, you know, or IGTV. So, you know, and that has a lot to do with it you know you can't you're not going to share a 30 minute video um you might you might save it for your family and you know or or grandkids but um most you know what what everybody loves is to see that wedding day come to life um in that short short film yeah and so that's that like my my style too and when i first started out i did different packages based on like coverage time so i'd be like okay for this price you get five hours of coverage for this price you get eight hours for this price you get 12 hours but the problem i found was like the 12 hour coverage brides got the best film because i could capture the whole the whole day right. um so what i kind of transitioned to over the years and it's what i'm doing now is no matter what if you go with me you're going to get full day coverage i only take on a limited number of weddings per year usually between 12 and 15 uh, and I do that because I really want to dedicate as much time as possible, both in pre, the day of, and post-production to every single wedding. Uh, and that means morning preps to the end of the day. I mean, I just had a wedding in January when we had that big ice storm. Uh, and the original plan that the groom and I had discussed like six months prior was, hey, he's really big into fitness and we, he wants to go on a morning jog. And I was like, I am not a morning person, but I will wake up and go on a freaking jog with you with a camera just to get some sweet content for your film uh problem was on a, during an ice storm nobody's running outside so they're staying at a hotel and i got up even earlier i got up at like 5 a.m went out to their hotel and filmed him in this gym just to get some additional content for their film so that wedding day was like 15 hours or something like that oh because i stayed until basically the end of the night uh but in the end i mean that was a it was a much more engaging film because especially knowing that our outdoor time and our portrait sessions were going to be limited due to the weather I wanted to make it up in other areas and I think that's something new that you kind of experience over the years as you're doing this like you can tell by the end of the day like when I'm putting my cameras back in their gear and I'm zipping everything up I could be like I think that I can make a pretty solid like seven to nine minute film from the content today or it can be like oh man that was kind of light maybe like a three to five like this will be it'll be tougher and so knowing that and like knowing 
you can look at a timeline after so long in the business and be like, okay, well, based on what I'm seeing here and based on what the weather's supposed to be like, uh, that I may need to bring a second shooter along or recommend it to the couples that they pay for one to come along just to get some additional footage. So, um, right. yeah, definitely clarify what kind of film you're going to get. And a good videographer will be able to identify what makes an awesome film based on the content that they're able to capture during the day for sure. Yeah. And I, I love that. And I think that is so incredibly helpful as far as um, just understanding um, what, you know, obviously what the difference is, but also as, you know, as you, you as the couple, just trying to find out what, you know, what you're wanting and, and what, what you're needing. And, and the great thing is you, you know, when you have questions, don't be afraid to, to ask, you know, um, anyone, any wedding professional gets a lot of questions as far as their, their trade and or their business. And, and so, you know, definitely, I, I love this because if you don't ask, then you won't know. And, um, yeah, so, okay. Um, all right. If they have any timeline ideas, yeah. So, I mean, after you work in the industry for long enough, you can generally get a good idea of, hey, you should probably like pad out this area right here or um, slot some time for a sunset session. Because a lot of times, especially if the couple's not doing a first look, you're really just going from morning preps right into the ceremony and then right into the reception. And if you're not careful, you won't have a whole lot of additional B-roll of just the couple just loving on each other and looking awesome to kind of mix up the footage in the film. So uh, definitely ask a videographer, same for photography too. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Like we both really appreciate some quality time just to hang out with our couple and create a cool little session like that. I mean, I love capturing all the, the B-roll from the morning preps, the detail shots, party dancing, you know, being really candid in general, I'm much more of a fly in the wall kind of filmmaker, but you know, portrait sessions and first looks, I really love bouncing ideas off the photographer and like, okay, you pose them a little bit here and I'll kind of shoot over your shoulder. I'll always tell them, be like, hey, here's a pro tip. Don't look at me. I'm not the photographer. You can look at her. Just never look at me. Uh, and then maybe you'll do some moving shots or like have them dance a little bit and then the photographer can take shots of that. So it's a good idea to try and work a little, some, some space in there uh, to help your filmmaker get as good of a film as possible. And a big part of that is your timeline for sure. And if you have a planner, even better, because then you can just work with them and whatever they say goes. So yeah. Right. Right. Absolutely. yeah. A planner is always, always a good thing. Um, they yeah. definitely help keep everything, uh, keep everything moving. That is for sure. The unsung yeah. heroes of the wedding industry for sure. Yes, that is for sure. And they, you know, the great thing is wedding planners also know that you're going to need time with the couple. You know what I mean? Like they know, okay, in order to get, um, you know, what they're, what they're paying Austin for, like he needs, you know, so yeah. And, yep. and, you know, photographers and videographers, they go, you know, they go hand in hand with, I think every, every photographer and videographer for them, I'm sure for the most part, um, you know, they, they understand they have to work together. So, um, because you're both, you know, you're, you're trying to get what both of you need. So, okay. And, um, ask what you can do as a couple to get the best film possible in terms of content. Yep. So I always ask, um, in the initial inquiry, if the couple is planning on doing uh, a first look, uh, if they're going to be doing personal vows, or if they're going to be doing like letters or a gift exchange prior to the ceremony, just because my style of, of wedding film does, it really does incorporate a lot of natural audio. Uh, and so if it's just, you know, if there's no first look and if it's just the standard repeat after me vows, and if they're not doing a gift or letter exchange, that means I have to rely on the random talking during morning preps and hope for some gold there, or I have to hope that there's some good stuff spoken by the officiant, which can be hit or miss. You just never know. Sometimes it's pretty cut and dry and not that inspiring, or it just really doesn't like, sometimes the officiant's dialogue is not really reflective of the couple so much. It's more just kind of moving through the paces and there's a few customized bits in there, but it's not really as, as much them as like a letter or personal vows would be. Um, 
I mean, but I, I recognize that personal vows can be a pretty daunting thing. I mean, when I was reading my own, I was super nervous, um, like super nervous. So a lot of people don't want to do that, especially in front of a big group. So a lot of times it's easier to put those thoughts down into a letter. Uh, you don't even need a gift, but just like to kind of work out the, you know, the pre-ceremony jitters and kind of like, you don't have to write it on the day of. In fact, I would probably say don't, maybe type it out on your phone. Like, I mean, for the the vows that I wrote, Steph, I had been chipping away at those on my phone for a few months, just kind of smoothing them out. Obviously, I had pretty high standards because I've listened to so many of them. So I was like, these, there's no way these are going to be good enough, but we'll just go with it. And then on the morning of, I transcribed them from my phone to a cool little book, right? And then... So that kind of works. Um, but basically ask your ask. I mean, if you really do value videography and you want the best film possible, you need to kind of, there are certain things that will really help your film uh, that will go a long way, but it really kind of depends on the style of the filmmaker. Like if I was just making music videos, you reading your letters or your personal vows wouldn't mean anything to me because I'm not going to use them. So it really depends on what kind of filmmaker you are. I, I cherish natural audio that really represents you as a couple and kind of who you are. I mean, and also another thing, never rely on toast for your good audio. They, I mean, sometimes you get some really, really good ones and I've opened up some films with some that'll just make you cry all over your keyboard, but that's like one time out of 50. <laughs> Usually it's like, for those of you who don't know me, followed by some really terrible stories about the bride or the groom. So don't rely on that. Uh, kind of take that, take that content into your own hands and get some, some good natural dialogue for your filmmaker, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And those are some of the best memories. I mean, from, from the wedding day, those end up being some of the best memories, let alone great for the film and, and everything else. Um, so yes, perfect. Yes. All right. Ask them to describe their filming and editing style. So, yeah, I mean, you you might be able to discern what their filming and editing style is by watching their films. You see my French bulldog back here? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so anyways, yeah, you might be able to uh, discern that just by watching their films, but I think a good insight into their style is to actually ask them how they describe their style. Because if they describe it as like, yeah, we're really kind of handheld and kind of organic and very like documentary and, and um, you know, that's different than a lot of others. Uh, so if you ask them, they might reveal some, some strategies that they may not have even known that they had. Uh, so yeah, whenever I was looking at, I mean, obviously whenever I was shopping around for videographers, I was able to apply my own knowledge of filmmaking to it. Um, but yeah, it's kind of different. Like same with photographers. I mean, do you ever, I, do you ever get asked if people to, you know, describe your style and how it compares? Cause there's different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so many different styles out there. Um, and editing too, like, I really like to edit to the music, but not let it overwhelm. So the soundtrack is really just a vehicle to kind of help the story be told. It's not so much to tell the story by itself. So I will look for songs that specifically have some highs and lows in their wave files before even really listening to them. Like if I'm looking at licensing websites, I'll just basically scroll through and look at the waveforms and be like, that one's got some good peaks and some good valleys. Might be able to squeeze some good audio uh, down here and up here. And then I'll kind of fit the whole wedding day around that. Uh, and that's different. A lot of videographers don't do that. I mean, they it's totally different style. So yeah, definitely ask what their filming and editing style is for sure. And just like you said, I, I feel like, yes, you can see a part of that, um, but not always do you see everything that they produce. So I feel like that's such a good question to ask um, so that you know, you know, what you're getting. So yes. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. Ask them about their favorite movies or TV shows and why. Yeah, uh, I, this is not really, you don't need to do this per se, but one of my favorite questions I get is whenever a couple asks me like, what's a favorite movie of yours from the last few years? And <laughs> that kind of shows like, 
um, an appreciation for style, but there's not a whole lot of overlap in terms of like, like I'm a really big sci-fi fan, but there's not a whole lot of common ground between that and wedding films. But if you're familiar with the films, like um, say I really like, I don't know, like the first few seasons of House of Cards. Um, it's how it's filmed is very like, very locked off shots with really pretty compositions and they just kind of there's not a whole lot of crazy camera movement in that show they don't do a whole lot of tracking or dolly shots and you might be able to be like oh i can kind of see how your favorite you know you know movie or tv shows affects your filming style uh so i think you can kind of learn a lot about about your filmmaker that way just by asking that plus it's kind of a cool way to just get to know them and you guys can debate on how game of thrones ended or if you thought it was good or bad or you know however and it's just a good way to get to know your filmmaker for sure so definitely recommended and you know i think that also brings up um i love how you worded this topic but i do when when i look at this i feel that when it's it's a question like this that allows a personal side um, because when they're on your wedding team, you want to know, um, you know, know them as well. Um, and, you know, just make sure that they're a good fit and not that, you know, unless they watch this, um, this <laughs> you're not going to not hire them, but um, I feel like it just gives a, a personal side. And just like you said, Austin, you know, as far as, you know, the, the video and, and if it's something that really shows you that, but I just feel like this is such a good, you know, um, way, to, you know, to figure out, okay, are we good fit? Are we, you know, what, what do we have in common that you wouldn't normally bring up? And I think that's a great question. Yeah. Plus, I mean, it's just, it just breaks up the monotony of the normal wedding day questions. Like, you know, Hey, by the way, yeah. while I get time, like, what's a good TV show you've been watching recently? And you just like, oh my, like I remember when I got that email initially, like a few years ago, I was like, oh yes. Like I can totally talk about the second season of Fargo and how it's probably like the single best season of television, you know, in recent memory. And like, just, just get the nerd out for a little bit, you know, it's cool for sure. <laughs> that is for sure. And I feel like everyone has, you know, everyone has favorites. There's no, yeah. there's no doubt about that. And it's an easy, easy topic to uh, talk about and you learn a lot. So yeah. Okay, um, th that is, um, so that is all as far as our first, um, our first topic.